Now, as the second quarter of the year draws to a close this week, Damilola Akimbami, head of research at Financial Derivatives, joins us to discuss what to expect from Nigeria's second quarter GDP figures. Dami, good to have you on the show with us this good morning. morning. So the indicators obviously favored the previous uh, GDP uh, results. What are the indicators saying concerning the expectations for the GDP results come uh, August? Uh, well, what we're seeing right now, we're seeing sort of like a mixed um, performance. We have some um, indicators that have actually been maintained that positive trend. So for instance, if you look at oil prices, the average so far in the second quarter is around $75 per barrel compared to 67 that we saw in the first quarter. If you also look at the exchange rate, it has been relatively stable aside from the initial aberrational movement we had late May. And if you look at inflation, that has been declining steadily since February last year. So we've had some those um, indicators perform well. But on the other side, if you look at oil production, oil production has actually declined by about 2%, which is which is marginal to about 1.74 million barrels per day. I'm sure you're aware of the shortings and disruptions we've had um, to the pipelines. If you also look at other output variables, for instance, the purchasing managers index, it has actually been slowing down to the point that it has moved to a contraction territory of about 49 points, according to the um, FBN quest. If you also look at the rains we've had so far this year, we've seen that it hasn't been as frequent as um, previous years. So that definitely is going to affect agricultural output in terms of the kind of harvest we would have. And also talking about rains, if you look at power, we've had, um, like I mentioned also, um, shortings and what have you. The stock, mar uh, stock market also has moved into a correction territory. It recovered slightly, mm -hmm. it's back to negative. So it's more of like a mixed um, performance. But if you look at it, take a holistic picture. The first half of 2018 definitely is much better than the first half of 2017. So would that mean that uh, project we shouldn't be expecting a positive climb from the 1.9 percent that we saw in the first quarter of this year and what we are looking at we are actually so what anticipating, are your forecasts what are you forecasting? yes we're actually anticipating a flat um growth rate it will still remain positive but we believe it's going to remain around the 1.95 max two percent so it's going to be relatively flat like i mentioned um these indicators haven't really performed um that that well and if you even look at the policy environment monetary policy has been flat no change to um, the monetary policy parameters aside from interest rates that we see that have been declining but on the fiscal end we all know that the budget was passed and signed mm -hmm. late so even the impact of capital um, expenditure the funds that are going to be released won't be felt until much later in the second half of um, 2018 but in terms of revenue like i mentioned because all prices are higher so they would mitigate the um, shortfall we had in production and even tax According to what the FIRS chairman said, um, we've, we've received about 30 billion naira since the implementation of these um, VADES programs. So revenue, so far, we're still relatively good in that, but even the policies that are supposed to um, sort of like stimulate or um, encourage or yeah, complement mm -hmm. this growth actually haven't really been put in place. So it's, it's going to be more of a flat performance from what we're looking so at. So on Q2. the year, because I know the projections are here in Nigeria mm -hmm. and the IMF and the World Bank is between 2.1, 2.2% on For the, the year. year. Yes. Does that mean that we need to, we, there, might, there might be a review, or would you be reviewing your own forecast for the year? Definitely. Once um, we, um, the second quarter growth numbers come out, we might, everyone might need to go back to the drawing board to review um, the performance. But we still have Q3. And again, because most of these things, so for instance, now in Q3, we're anticipating that there might be um, discussions about um, supplementary budget being, being brought, to, um, uh, brought on the table. So this, with the multiplier effect of electoral funds that are being disbursed and the budgetary funds, it should have a positive inf effect on the economy. So that, at least, we, we expect to see should have some impact on the economy. But by and large, um, if Q2 numbers come in as we project, around 1.95 to 2%, we might have to review our forecast for the year. So no doubt oil, oil, oil remains the precious baby, the, it, the it major is, contributor. It still is. It still is. Although other sectors, so for instance, manufacturing, thanks to stable um, forex, has been doing well. But the thing is that once these funds, especially from um, campaign funds and the budget, once they hit the market, we're going to see a build up in the demand pressure for forex because manufacturers will be scrambling to try and bring, source for funds to bring in their commodities. Mm -hmm. And definitely this would have a spillover effect on manufacturing, even on inflation in terms of imported inflation. So as on one hand, we're, seeing, we're taking baby steps forward, and on the other hand, there are still some factors that could constrain this performance. Now, I'm thinking about structural defect. I mean, okay. power, for instance. Mm. So, you know, we had that collapse, uh, mm. and despite the fact that many of those gas stations are back on stream, I mean, we're still doing just a little over 3,000 megawatts. Yes. And I'm thinking about how that, is going to, how that is impacting the manufacturers themselves. And 
that's on one, one hand. Agriculture also, you mentioned that rains haven't been you know, as forthcoming as we would wanted them to be. So I'm thinking that, and that is, I mean, that's what we look forward to. We're looking at core inflation and, of yes. course, the headline inflation. I'm just thinking, is that going to be a major problem? It's going to be something to consider. So like you mentioned, power, that's, it forms one of the major operating costs of most um, companies. And if power is not stable, they have to rely on alternative energy. And if you look at diesel prices, have been above um, 200, between 200 to 220 naira per liter. So if, if diesel prices keep on increasing, obviously that would increase the cost of um, these manufacturers. So we need power, not only even for in terms of preservation and even for economic activities, on the other hand, interest rates, so I mentioned the nominal interest rates have been declining. Even some lending rates have declined to at least an average of 21 to 22 percent. So that's, that's, that's better than it's nothing, still high, but it's but still high. Than what we exactly. Had <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's still high, but better than what we had before. So these things, definitely, these factors are going to, um, in, they're going to take um, some, in, um, they're going to impact on the performance of the economy. When you consider all the talks about the diversification agenda of the government and all efforts talked about bringing in policy to revamp the agri sector, okay. I dare say it's heartbreaking when you now look at the GDP figures and predictions that the agri sub sector is held back by sub sector performance due to dip in crop production. What factors should we begin to look into to really make agri a major contribution to the GDP? Well, agri, there's been a lot of focus on agri, especially from the government's um, side. We've seen that a lot of intervention funds have been directed to it, but it's still not enough. If you look at the data released, the amount of credit from the private sector to, um, I mean, from the banking sector mm -hmm. to that particular sector is about 2% compared to other sectors like manufacturing and co. And this is one sector that is the largest employer of labor. And because of the multiplier effect, needs the, the, we need a lot of focus on that sector in terms of subsidies, in terms of the types of fertilizers mm -hmm. that, um, um, that will be available to the farmers, incentives also. So they need employment from both the private sector and the public sector. So it's not just the government's um, um, baby now to handle. Mm -hmm. But I think um, if all hands come on deck, it's something that would definitely help the economy if we can be food secure, if we can increase our output. We have so many materials, commodities that we're yet to tap into. Sesame seeds, cocoa that we initially used to be among the top mm -hmm. two, three producers. We're about the six, seven okay. largest producer of cocoa. So we still have opportunities that are yet to be tapped into. Thank you very much for your thoughts on Damila, the show this you morning. Thank you. Damilola Akimbami is the head of research at Financial Derivatives.